hospital information system to challenge in the future. To err is human. Yes, human can make mistake. Or we can say that it happened a lot that human or people, us, you, me, always make mistake. Or it can make a mistake. Introduction. Some report mentioned that medical errors and healthcare offers even is the major leading cause of death in many countries. Well, WSO itself mentioned that 12% of medical errors in the case of hospitalization. And in United States, 44,000 to 98 people, 98,000 people die each year in the United States due to medical errors. Therefore, hospital information system or HIS made to reduce medical errors. HIS is able to simplify and streamline the business process. Then, if we see the business perspective, not only to reduce the error, but also information system, you can make custom format in real-time information and it can adapt with any kind of situation in any business process you have. It makes the operational efficiency. It can reduce the cost. It can supply the information to decision makers. You can have a better customer service. Continuous availability of the system. Of course, it machine so it can work 24-7. And it grows the communication capabilities and method that with the current technology you can have many channels as your customers wants to communicate with you. You have to maximize your IT benefits. You have to maximize the information technology and communication to grow your business, align with your business strategy. So in designing a in designing an IT, don't forget that you have to have a vision what kind of business strategy, what kind of business process you will have so that the technology can benefit your business. The implementation. I will say the project is failed when it doesn't meet the optimal requirement and when the user satisfaction doesn't meet, well, I can say too that the information system, it won't uh, play effectively in your organization because your user doesn't satisfy. You have to remember, it's not only building the system, not only programming the system, but initiation of the information system in your organization is very difficult task. It depends on many factors. Uh, it could be the project manager, it could be your willingness of the manager, it could be the changing behavior of your uh, uh, all of the stakeholders. And Based on my experience, the implementation of the system, it better uh, in the stages. You have to make a priorities. You have to make a strategy. Which one implemented first? Which part? And two, which uh, uh, department, for example? If, let's say, your technology, your system is big and complex, it's kind of impossible to implement all of the system at once. You have to remember that. In pre-implementation, of course, you have to design it. You have to think the risk analysis. You have to kind of make a simulation on the system itself. Pertaining. What is pertaining? Yes, if you build the system, buy from other vendors, then you have to pertain the cost, how much it costs, whether it can, whether you can afford that system or not. And the most important thing is when you make the system, you have to think of the user training at the end, not only building it. Because if the user cannot use it, it's useless. 
and then uh, of course based on um, my research also that in the implementation we have to make step by step implementation it's better if you make a module base one module implement everybody can use it everybody can have it's happy uh, you evaluate that system and then you implement another module and remember this is a system it's a computer program you have to have a clear standard operating procedures otherwise it won't work you have to keep monitoring and evaluation evaluate since beginning the design the implementation one by one and don't forget you cannot build 100 percent perfect system at once you have to keep maintenance you have to fix uh, the error if you have a, a complaint from your users then you have to fix that complaint and also you have to evaluate the users what is their problems what is their difficulties what is their barriers do they like it is it easy for them is it helpful for them you have to evaluate them and remember if the users complain and you didn't do anything about it or it's slow then they won't like it if they don't like it they will not use it then your system is useless also uh, a lesson from my experience that uh, a cost is everything not the cost is everything that managers tend to have cost value in mind if it's too expensive they won't they won't uh, make it or they won't uh, implement it adapt the main function in developing an implementation flexibility in implementation is important why because not every uh, plan of implementation will run smoothly there is there are always a problem in the middle that we have to uh, deal with it and and solve it the problem in the middle we have to find a way to solve it either by the sop management rules or we change little bit the system uh, the system itself in my opinion it's better if make kind of uh, profit benefit i cannot say profit at this moment but it can give the benefit for the organization which is most likely able to connect the insurance and easier for the uh, a customer to pay this is the flexible payment well in in modern technology we can see that they provide so many channels uh, to pay in order to buy uh, things in store for example and don't forget this is the case in Indonesia that there is always the accreditation of the hospital so when you build the system you have to take in mind that it will useful in the accreditation uh, process the system itself has to be adaptive and it accommodate the main needs of the managers and remember what's the cost the design itself you have to make it easier simple fulfill the performance indicator if you make the system you have to have the performance indicator before in your organizations you can measure the effective process you can measure how good is the registration what is the performance indicator how you make automation is it user satisfied or not but the question is how to measure whether the user is satisfied or not so again you have to build uh, uh sop clear sop 
Support the management. Of course, you have to give the management support by building this hospital information system. Make the right decision. Support the finance function and profit improvement. Leadership. From the leadership perspective or the implementation of the system, leadership play big role. You have to be a firm leader. You have to be a supportive leader and active participation in the process, in the design, until the implementation. And of course, year by year of the use of the system. Of course, cost is an issue. Well, implementing an hospital information system, we saw the barriers. One major highlight barriers in many studies is the high initial cost. And sometimes they forgot that the maintenance were another cost that came as a financial burden for most hospitals in the studies. And then there are also psychological barriers such as reluctancy from the health practitioners and their perception of the usefulness when it comes to the new system. Sometimes they will uh, not believe, they are not convinced that the system is useful for them or it will benefit their organization. Now, the benefit of hospital information system is improve the patient care improve the management efficiency, its reduction costs that come from the reduction of supplies, storage space and personnel costs, or delivering paper charts. This is the direct cost uh, reduction. But of course, there are many indirect cost reduction. Factor said, uh, contributing the total cost of his implementation is the cost of the software itself, of course, the infrastructure of the system, the cost of every step of the software development lifecycle, as you can see in the picture on the right side, and of course, the scale of uh, the implementation. If you implement the system only in a small department, of course, it's cheaper compared to uh, implement a system in whole hospital. And 100 beds hospital, of course, different for the cost of implementation compared to, let's say, 500 beds of hospital. That is only the, the, the size. We are not talking about the complexity of the system. If the software is complex, then it can add more costs. The technology acceptance theory. It's already been since 1975 to model PC utilization in 1991, extended technology acceptance model in 2000 or TAM. And I like this one, extended unified theory acceptance and use of technology, or I can say UTAUT. Turn out that based on our study, the satisfaction is the time to adapt or use time, usage time means that along the implementation, along the use of the system, it does not make the user satisfied. And you have to make sure that facility support is enough for them. Let's say you don't have enough computer. It won't make them happy, no matter how good you make the system. Of course, they will satisfy it if it benefits them. If the management is not supportive enough, then they will dissatisfy. If you don't train them, they don't like it. And of course, the software itself, you have to make sure that the software is well built and uh, easy to use. The hardware itself, of course, if it doesn't enough, they don't like it. 
because the doctor's satisfaction can be achieved when the influencing factors such as users, technology, and organization are considered well. Let's see one of the examples, the computer patient order entry. This is interesting that in, uh, in my study, uh, in my recent study, systematic review, we found that many types, many brands of the CPOA system. And CDSS, we have found also, this is the computer decision support system. I will say that the CDSS is the brain of the computer patient order entry system because the computer, because the CPO is the delivery system, but the way they think is the CDSS. That's the easiest way. The surprisingly is that I only found three CDSS software that use or report by more than one studies. Back to the CDSS or CPOA, there is no control by trustful information. If you see drug, if you see medical equipment, they were calibrated, they were assessed. You can see that medical equipment calibration must be carried out routinely according to the command direction or, or, or the regulation. But we barely seen uh, the subject in, the, uh, in my research that there are or there is a regulation regarding the software how to build the software, how to maintain the information technology and communication. So there must be a evaluation of the system itself, not only for the medical device, not only for the drug, but also the information system. The obstacles, oh, I forgot to translate it. So the obstacles is the complexity of the implementation. This is the top one. Uh, the complexity of the system makes it difficult to implement. And there are a system error. And we found out that the inconsistency of the regulation from the government also make the difficulties in building the system. And of course, the users uh, some of the users cannot use it. We have to uh, 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 to train them first, illiterate, uh, illiterate them with the computer. Mm -hmm. And we found many times that they are reject the idea of using information system. Now, that is the, the beginning and then uh, COVID-19 happened. What happened with the healthcare service? There are service disruption. There are service disruption, discontinuing or reducing services. People are afraid to come to hospital. Or also it can be the doctors also afraid to meet with as many as patients before COVID-19. People who need treatment for diseases like cancer, cardiovascular disease, or diabetic have not been receiving the health services and medicine. It could be that the hospital are limiting their service or the patient also afraid to come to the hospital. So the health service has been partially or even completely disrupted. For example, if you had to close the healthcare facility because it there are contamination in that facilities. That means it's completely stopped. And sometimes reassignment of staff to work on the COVID nineteen ward. It can reduce uh, another staff from another ward. So it's reducing the the reducing the service is also happening here. Basically, it creates the distance, the distance between the patient and the healthcare facilities. Now, 
we know that there is a distance there is a solution a long term solution actually we call it telemedicine well i see it from a customer perspective now we can see that the patient is still at home and this is the hospital the patient can talk about the symptoms or even send some biometric data because they have the uh thermometer at home or they have a uh, uh blood glucose meter and then they send it to the doctor the doctor send uh the doctor's is diagnosis give a treatment or prescribing and also problem assessment and recommendation basically this is what happen but the challenge look it's tele and medicine look at the distance this is the patient sending out the information this is the physician this is in hospital look there is uh, so many uh, activities here that has been delivered via medium internet or communication now you will see the problem already barriers of course there is a age socio economic status gender level so many information overloaded overload poor design of the telemedicine liability issue uncertain outcomes and it feels that the technology means you don't meet the person in person because you only text or you only call it feels that you don't meet the real people and from the hospital's uh, hospital perspective this is a challenging situation the hospital size itself profit status teaching status are not rural setting rural or in the city some of them resistant to change of course if you're using internet technology bandwidth is a problem and when they build the telemedicine itself the return on investment is of being as what is the cost can i have the benefit of it and of course not only the physician not only the nurse not only the health workers that we need but also the technological support the it guy and if you already have all of that do you have the license to do it or you automatically able to do telemedicine with your hospital license or you need another license we don't know because it's that the rule is not the law is not clear yet and there are another uh problems which is the cost and the technology challenges how to implement the telemedicine what is the model there are so many types of model which one is the most appropriate for your hospital for for your country for your place that it's very depends on the situation in your uh, in your place and of course from technological perspective uh we have to understand that there are a confidentiality privacy and legal issues you have to make sure that you meet all of that requirement and of course whether you can do it or not so you have to make sure the laws the rules the government rules is a uh, a uh, meet so that you can provide the telemedicine now we have to understand that the future is happening now when we say the telemedicine no 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 it's impossible but now we have to provide them with the uh, provide them with the what you call uh service that it's in tele in uh, far away telemedicine so the future is happening now the world is changing we like it or not we should adapt to it thank you